Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're going to do a watercolor landscape painting. Um, it's going to be imaginary. Um, I feel like I haven't done watercolors in a few days so it's kind of just one of those dive in and have fun. Really no experimentation here but once I get started with the painting maybe there'll be a theme that I'll kind of just pick up on and start rolling with. And um, I guess I'll mention that in the title, whatever the theme winds up being. So in front of me, I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua, 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press, just saturating it with water. So I like to start off uh, wet and wet. And then from there, we'll start feeding colors in. All right, I'm using the medium hake brush. Now this is just kind of an old, probably three years at this point that I've been using this one. And I always say it's about time to start with a new one, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. So I'm gonna take some raw sienna and I'm gonna start off with the sky. Pigment wise, I have some Da Vinci brand paint out. And um, I think I put out a little bit of the Cotman brand. Start out like that. I feel like maybe we should focus on something light and airy. When I'm doing that, I'm stretching the paper out because as it saturates with water, it um, it buckles and will eclipse. Press it down, and that'll um, stretch it out for us. Mixing a little bit of ultramarine in. So ultramarine with that raw sienna is going to be kind of grayish. Get a little bit more blue, but I don't want it to be super stark blue. Get some water down here. Maybe I'll put a lake or something. You know what? We'll do light, airy, and we'll try to um, kind of do things in the vein and the, in the guise, the way of uh, Turner, JMW Turner. Let's grab some light red oxide. Get a little bit of that in the sky. We can even play with a lizard if we want. I'll let the paper stretch a little bit more flatten it out. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take that light red oxide with a little bit of ultramarine. I'm going to mix a light purple. And this will be my far distant horizon. Then I'm going to put a little bit warmer mix in. So here's a little bit of burnt sienna. That's a lot of bit of burnt sienna, but that's fine. Put a little bit closer. 
I'm gonna look at the edge here. And now I'm gonna put trees in. But the way I'm gonna do that, I want trees here, starting off. Trees probably poking up here. That's where the bases will be. And they're gonna cast up. I'm gonna do the foliage wet and wet at first. Because we're going wet and wet, it's gonna soften it. And then I'm gonna dry and do the foliage again, and that'll create a sense of depth in that foliage. Let's um, mix some ultramarine into this. Grab some lemon yellow. I didn't put any lemon yellow out. So you can see how that's going in soft. It's going to wind up casting reflections. Reflections down here. Grab a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of that ultramarine for a dark. So, burnt umber, ultramarine, mixing that for dark. in here the base of where these trees and bushes will be idea of grass and foliage along the edge of that water. So I take the card and scrape into that as well if we want to. Now let's pause for a dry off. Okay, so everything's dried off. Now I have the number one rigger. And I'm going to use this for my trunk and branches. I could not find my number one rigger. I don't know if it's in the other room after I had washed it, but I thought I brought everything in here. Usually I use the number four because it holds more um, pigment. It just makes it easier. But the number one is fine. You get the thinner lines with the number one. Use the side to start grounding this. You get an awesome texture from the side of these brushes, whether it's a number one or a number four. You can even Start mod modeling a little bit of foliage with that side there. I'm going to wind up coming in with the hake and doing more texture. But it gives you an idea of what these brushes are capable of.
we got the hake. Now, since we're going on dry, get a sharper texture with it. So this will give us that contrast with the softness that we put in wet and wet. down. You can take that same texture, go up and down. You can come up on this side as well. Now, I think I'm going to do a little bit of a change here. I'm going to grab some burnt umber and ultramarine, mix a little bit of a dark. I'm going to strengthen this edge and bring it down a little bit lower so that I can come here and do an S-shaped composition. So my water's gonna go here, and I'm gonna bring a land mass right there. Now let me know in the comments if you like that change or not, but I think doing that change was an important demonstration on how you can take chances and change things up. Now we have a compositional shape taking place. We have an interesting foreground starting to happen. And I could probably do an interesting tree coming off of that. I'm going to put a little bit of foliage here in this stronger value. So it sits a little bit forward and pushes that other one back. bring this same concept on this side as well for a little bit more of a foreground. Mix some ultramarine and some burnt umber, get a little bit darker. Wet and wet elements. And you can use the hake itself. trunk and foliage and this stronger concentration more pigment will help this sit forward in the picture plane mix a little bit dark for the shadow that we cast for the base to help it sit in place Some variety within this one tree. And from there, use the number one to weave in and out. feed wet and wet right there if I wanted to darken off that one side. can get thicker lines with the number one by kind of pressing down more. So you can kind of see that right there. You could also add variety in this. 
with scraping in this fashion. We can scrape out a little bit of rocks here if we want. We have that darker value on there, so let's bring that. I don't want to choke the mouth of this waterway too much because if it comes in close, then opens up and then closes again, it kind of distorts the perspective. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you narrow this, you kind of want to narrow the height of this one. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Speaking of which, if things don't make sense, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to um, address everything that people comment. And if I can make things clearer, I will. Let's pause and do a quick dry off. Okay, so I'm gonna spruce a few things up, add a little accent marks, add a few trees and branches. I'm using the one, number one rigger. And while I do that, I kinda will do my uh, closing little spiel that with these videos, you are more than welcome to follow along with them. And whenever you follow along with any one of these paintings, any one of these tutorials, you have my permission to go ahead and put your own name on it. You can then go ahead and sell said painting. You have my permission to do that. Reason being is I want you guys to be successful. Um, selling a painting feels great. Um, you don't have to sell a painting to be successful, uh, but often it really does help build that confidence there. And often people will want something handmade that you made. So you have my express permission to do that. Um, of course, please uh, consider liking and subscribing. I think I mentioned, you know, feel free to leave comments, questions. If there's ever anything you want me to cover, I'll do my best to do so. I've been meaning to uh, do a waterfall painting. It's been something that I need to do, so I think we'll have one of those coming up soon. What else? Well, of course, uh, please consider liking, um, well, supporting on the Patreon. I have exclusive content on there, but I have plenty of free content on YouTube, so um, I think kind of supporting the Patreon is more like, hey, if you like the content, then I'm putting it out for free. Um, you know, check that out. And I always do have art for sale. You could always contact me through, uh, I think I have social media stuff, link it down below. And um, and then a whole new tree right here. Let's just uh, kind of go up with it and have fun. And whenever you do follow along, I would love to see your results. You're more than welcome to send me a private message on social uh, media, either Instagram or something like that. Um, or you could just tag me in it. I love seeing the way people interpret it and the different approach. Even if you guys try to follow everything to the T, things will come out different. And I love seeing that. So, we'll stop the video at that. 
I hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day.